And we are a go. Hey, everybody. Chef Eric here, the Grateful Chef. Welcome back again to the Grateful Chef Kitchen here where all the magic happens in this house. We're really uh, happy to be back. We've made our triumphant return from our quick trip to Florida. Quick shout out to my people, my family down in Florida, uh, in, in Delray. We had a wonderful time. It's a great food city. Um, and mom is recovering well from her double knee surgery, her knee replacement, I should say. It's awesome. To, she's a miracle of modern science and medicine. It's awesome. So uh, really happy that things are going well down there. We did a quick jump down there. Got, this, got some 80 degree, 75, 80 degree weather. Caught a little tan. So this chef is really happy, but he's super happy to be back live uh, cooking with you guys again. Remember, I'm not in this alone. We are in this together. And I am extremely grateful that you join us each and every week. If you're new, please chime in and just say hey and uh, give us your name and let us know that you're with us and watching. A um, couple uh, business things. Um, our website continues to grow and be populated with amazing information including our trip down to Florida. And a new feature that we launched this week is you can go to any of the cities that we've traveled to. If you click the little hamburger thing on the right, the three lines, and choose food travel, you can see all our food travel and our restaurants that we've gone to and recommend. But down at the bottom of each and every page for every city is a form that now you can fill out with your restaurant recommendations for us to learn new restaurants and for everyone who goes to that particular page to learn new restaurants. So it's an interactive feature that we're really super proud of and we hope that you take advantage of it. And that website is www.eatingwithcheferic.com. Uh, it's been a labor of love. Lena's put a lot of time into it. And uh, who is this mysterious Lena, you ask? She is our producer, our camera woman, and the wind beneath my wings. And we are extremely grateful for all the uh, work and dedication she puts in to putting on this show and uh, all the other things she's doing in the background. Like saying hi to everybody. So we've got Jamie oh. Parisi with us. We've got Karen Sonnenberg, Chris awesome. Eagle. Who? We're just calling Chris. Oh, hang on. Hey, Google, stop the timer. And then we also have... Who else do we have? <laughs> We've got Gary with us. Is the timer on in the bedroom too? Oh, I don't know. Hey Google, stop the timer. BRB. Look at that board. All that information. That's really funny. So, hey Gary. Hey Google. And Chris. Uh, it's kind of funny. It's still going. Why don't, why don't you come back? Close the door. All right. <laughs> I have made my triumphant return. Anyway, so we got a really cool, as always, episode of Cooking in the Grateful Chef Kitchen with me, Eric Eisenbud. And again, glad you joined us. So we're going to look at our board real quick. Tonight we're doing Cornish Game Hen. What a boring ingredient. Because what do you do with it? Throw it in the oven, you roast it, maybe you stuff it, you roast it. You know, what else you do with it? Well, we're doing some really cool technique tonight. We are deboning, and we've, de we've deboned a chicken before. We're going to debone the Cornish hen. We are going to sous vide it, and we are then going to saute it and crisp up the skin and butter baste it with garlic and thyme. It's really awesome. So that's what we're doing. We're also going to be doing um, a dish I may have done before, but it's such a good uh, side for stuff like a roast chicken or a sous vide chicken in this case. Sauteed button mushrooms, really great, really easy, a little bit of technique, a trick I'm going to show you that works not only for mushrooms, but works for scallops too. Intrigued? Watch this show and you'll find out. So we also are doing spring peas and carrots. So simple, peas and carrots, um, we're going to saute them in butter. They are actually in the sous vide bath right now. Um, and I made earlier today uh, salt baked pears with uh, camembert cheese. That's going to be a dessert and it's sort of like 
you know, a cheese plate with fruit, but it's fruit with cheese this time. So that's really cool. I'm not really going to be able to have enough time to show you how to make it, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. And um, I wanted to bring attention to something that we, that Lynn and I tried this week. And it is a company called Misfit Market. Misfit Market is doing an amazing job at taking uh, organic produce that normally gets rejected by supermarkets. Maybe they're too small or maybe they're too big. Uh, maybe there's a blemish. Maybe there's uh, two carrots growing out of one and it's intertwined and it won't look pretty on their shelves. Well, instead of having that food be thrown away, they're, they are offering a service where you can get on a regular order basis, you can get a box sent to you every one week or two weeks and it cuts the cost of organic produce, of any produce. I'm going to show you what we got this week and it cost us $22 and um, because there was a, they were offering a discount and everything and I got a great way for you guys to get a discount too. And uh, first I'm going to show you what we got. This is only part of what we got because I used it. All right, so I'm gonna I put everything that we got in this bowl. So we've got um, they they give a whole bunch of rainbow carrots. There was a purple one, there was a yellow one, there was an orange one. These carrots are what I used in the peas and carrots. So it's really cool, and these are absolutely beautiful. They're they're tasty. They're organic. They came with all the greens on them. So I don't know if you want to do anything with those, but uh, you know, really really great, nice bunch of carrots. We got four potatoes. Again, these are perfectly fine in my book. You know, I'll make something with these. We got four t potatoes. And I must mention, we got the smallest box, which is perfect for two people. And it's about 10 pounds of produce. Um, we got three of these huge, I believe these are uh, Honeycrisp or Gala. Three huge apples. We ate one today. They're really nice. Uh, we've got two butternut squash, awesome, and this was a lot nicer when I got it. I haven't used it yet, and it's kind of losing it in my refrigerator, but this is red kale. So I'll throw this into a soup, you know, something like that. I did make a vegetable soup this week out of a bunch of vegetables I had, including some that came in this box. And didn't you get onions? Oh, I got the two onions also, and I used them. Uh, I also got six of these small uh, pears. They're firm, they're really good, and these are the pears that I just did in this salt bake. So really excited about it. I want to show you the box. It's right here. It comes from Misfit Market. Really great company. Um, it says it's, you know, perishable food inside. Please refrigerate. It does come with an ice pack in it, and it's a reasonable price. So if you go to eatingwithcheferic.com and go to my favorite tools and uh, ingredients. Right at the top, we have Misfit uh, Market, and there is a link. You can click that link, and you're gonna get 25% off your first box, and I will also get 25% off my next box. So it's, uh, you know, one hand washes the other. It's great, the, the, the service is great. Every box you get will have different stuff. They tell you in advance the possibilities of what can come in your box. The smaller boxes won't get everything. Maybe the larger boxes will get most of the stuff. But it's really, really phenomenal, and I suggest that you check it out. It's really cool. So that was the Misfit Market. Yes, Lynn? So we've got Drew Miller. He's here from Ohio. Hey, Drew. Welcome. Andrew Billings. Andrew. And I'm Sam working Mann. on it, buddy. Sam Mann. He's enjoying a nutritious shake. Nice. Um, is that a chocolate shake? Sam? No, probably not. <laughs> but Andrew, I spoke to my guy in charge of the fundraiser. He said I would not be, I would I would not be disappointed if you didn't go. So I'm working on it, pal. I promise. And then we great. also have Jamie Greasy, and he's going to be in Brooklyn next week at the Hot Sauce Show. Awesome, great, Jamie. Fantastic. All right, so we've got a couple of things to do. I want to kind of get right to it. Enough of my jibber jabber. First thing we're going to do. Put on a pair of gloves because we are dealing with poultry. Uh, we are going to break down this Cornish hen. I'm going to show you. Now, again, this is not something I do every day. So, if you're looking for uh, the style that Jacques Fapin uses when he breaks down a chicken, it's not going to be on this show. But we're going to do the best we can. 
So Cornish game hen, beautiful. It's actually not a baby chicken. It's actually a whole breed in and of itself. This is a really nice one. You got the skin intact, but the anatomy is exactly like a chicken. So first thing I want to do, and I'm using my kitchen shears, we're going to cut the backbone out. All right, and this should, with a good pair of kitchen shears, this should go quite easily, especially with a small bird like this. And it's funny, it's, um, I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, please do. It's actually easier to do this on a larger, larger bird, but we're dealing with Cornish game hens today, so okay, that's what we got. So you're just going on either side of the, the backbone, and you're snipping right through the bones and you got the neck and of course we're saving all this stuff for our chicken stock it's perfectly good so now we have it's got no backbone um, first thing after that I want to do is with my knife I'm going to cut off these wing tips because there's really no meat to cut around them cut off the wing tips and the end of the leg where the foot is I'm using the back of my knife my mason love it and I'm just gonna crack it I just want to I just want to break it like that so it separates that'll come in handy later when we try and pull the bone out Whee! and you can feel that it's broke and it's perfect I don't think we're gonna need our shears anymore and now we're getting to the breastbone here you, you want to just crack it best as best you can if you need to you can kind of cut around the white cartilage to give yourself a little help can you show the white cartilage yep I'm going to show you when I pull it out okay. so I cut around it the meat you know sticks to it I'm going to use my boning knife kind of get closer to it and you, the, the important thing is when you're doing this for this dish especially you do not want to puncture the skin on the other side so let me see if you can see this this is that white cartilage right here and you can run your finger along it and just pull the meat away from it okay and then you want to try and pull it up but first you got to get around this the, the breastbone it's more of a bone than cartilage and again if you have to use your knife to kind of loosen it up that's exactly what you want to do I'm going to go with this technique and just cut around it take your time there is no rush and again you do not want to puncture that that skin on the on the other side because then you'll defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do all right so again working your fingers around it you can again try and crack it and there you go I'm trying to pull it out it's a little bit slippery with gloves but that's okay so here's that bony part all right you can throw that in the stock it's got some collagen in it and here comes the white cartilage and all there's just a piece of white cartilage not really palatable you don't really want to eat it all right so at this point I'm gonna crack the bone here just a little push and you can see that it's separated and it's just meat now and now I'm just going to cut this in exactly half there is the wishbone just pop right through it just like that all right so now I've got two halves of the Cornish hand so far so good you with me so far you've got even more people with you so you've got Karen Sonnenberg Sven Hodges and Gabby uh, Gabby and Sven. Yes, and we also have Ernest Wexler. Awesome. So he's also with us tonight. All right. So now this is a this is this next thing we're working on is the wing. You know, you got two. You got a joint here. You've got two two bones in the flat part. You got one bone on the top. This is a direct Jacques Pepin technique. When you hold it, you bend it backwards. I'm coming. Okay. And then you hold your fingers really close to it and you push up and those two bones will poke right through and again this is a lot easier with uh with chicken than it is with a cornish hen you can cut the cartilage off the end a little bit 
like so. And then once those bones, I'm going to put that there. Once these bones are poking through, if you can see that, hopefully, yeah, they sh they will pull right out. One and two, and there you got that part of the wing is completely deboned. Now you want to cut, you want to feel for the bone, and from the underside. Look out! You got Bobby Thomas watching too. Uh oh. I got a butcher watching. Offer any recommendations, my man. So here you want to, again, feel for the joint and you want to cut around it. And you don't have to worry too much about the wings because they all get tucked in. So you just want to really cut around the bone. Do the best you can. Doesn't have to look pretty. The only thing you need to keep looking pretty is the skin on the breast and the legs. So you got to Go by feel, cut around, and you've exposed the bone. You're going to scrape, scrape it down. And I'm still zoomed in on you. Nice. Scrape it down, all the way down to the next joint. You're going to crack it if you can. There you go. I heard it crack. And there's the bone. Take it out. Now, there's still a bone in there. And we're going to get to that once we take the breast bone off. Now we're getting to the, the leg. Now we're on the underside, remember, not cutting through the skin. And we're going to expose the thigh bone, which is right here. You can see the joint. All right, there's a thigh bone right here. And we want to get to it, cut around it. Just like this. Feel for it. Again, not puncturing that skin. Very important. And you'll find out why in a second. Alright, now if you can get around the ball joint. And again, be careful. Knives are sharp. Chicken is slippery. We got an accident waiting to happen. Alright. Feel around for it. Crack it if you can. There you go. Cut it off. Another piece of bone. Okay, now you've exposed that leg bone. You can cut around it and so you can get it and scrape it down. Scrape it down, scrape it down, all the way to the next joint. Just like we did before. I'm going to crack it. Pull it out. Now, where I broke the down by the foot, I'm going to just cut through. And this you got to be careful because when you do crack it, you might get some shrapnel in there, some really sharp pieces. So, yes, Liam, what is so funny? Bobby, Bobby Thomas, oh man, uh, killing me. Actually, he said, said, don't try this at home. Just ask your butcher to do it for you. That is a, That he can do. <laughs> but you got to make sure that they, they know that you, that skin needs to be left intact. All right, listen, I want you guys to um, come and step out of your comfort zone a little bit and uh, try these things, you know. I, I got to say, I am so uncomfortable watching what you're doing. So that would be so far I'm out of my a trained company. professional. All right, so once you get around the ball here, you're going to kind of scrape down. Now remember, it's loose because we took the foot out. And scraping, scraping. And there we go. Just pulling it out. And believe me, the, the leg is the hardest part. So once you get that done, it's like you're, you're home free almost. Because now you have the breastbone, which is very thin. You just got to cut underneath it, pull it out. Again, keeping that skin intact. I will keep saying that. You want to keep that skin in its place. 
cut down, cut around, scrape, good technique. And we also have Ephraim with us. Hey, Ephraim. Any chance that you just do half? And Maybe. One later? Yeah, I'll do half, and I'll just show you how to, how to wrap it up. Okay, and you're just really feeling for where the bones are, and you're cutting it out. Good sharp knife, really important. Scrape it off the ribs, the rib cage. And there you, that's the rib cage. All right, so that's, that's basically how it's done. You can see now I've got the skin intact the way I wanted it. Okay, you got the leg here. You've got the wing here. Okay. Good. Wing here, leg here, but you got all that skin intact. And that's very important. So I will keep this at Lynn's request for after the show. So I don't bore you guys to culinary death. Okay. And we also have Ted Ushfaluzi and Jay Tepper. He's actually cooking tonight. Wow. Yes, he's doing Brussels sprouts and grilling a bit bigger burger. Awesome. And then we also have uh, Jacqueline Rugg. Oh, thanks Jacqueline. Hope everything is well in uh, the cape. All right, so I, now what you want to do is we're taking a nice piece of plastic wrap. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the big commercial roll of plastic wrap. And most of them won't either. And most of you won't either. So you really got to spread it out nice. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this Cornish game hen another glove. Actually, I'll just use a paper towel. And you're going to put it skin side down on your plastic. All right, I had to what? touch the chicken. You didn't touch the chicken? You tried not to touch the chicken because of... Yeah, the just so I, you know, so I don't have to wash my hands, but now i got to wash my hands when this is done. Okay. All right, so we've got that skin completely intact. I feel a little piece of a bone here. I want to get that out. I'm going to zoom in. Oops. Okay. I'm going to zoom in in the wrong spot. Sorry, guys. You're going to tuck in all the little bits and pieces, the wing. Hey, Vicky. Hi, Vicky. You know, Vicky. Vicky did an awesome thing this week. Vicky sent me a grateful chef magnet that I have up on my hood right now. Really cool. Well, it's, a, it's my logo on a magnet. I'm going to zoom in on it as much as I can. But now your head's in front of it. Oh. Going back again. All right. We'll, anyway. We'll go visit it later. So we're on our plastic wrap right now. And you basically want to gather up the sides like so. Gather it up. You're making a package. And you, the, the idea is to get it into a ball. Alright, so you want to gather all your pieces up. You want to squeeze out as much air as you possibly can. Okay, I did something earlier where I had a small little metal bowl that I sat it in to kind of help keep the shape. But you basically want to wrap it into a ball like so. Squeezing out as much air as possible. And you want to twist it nice and tight. Like this, nice and tight. That's what you're getting, that's what you're looking for. And so you can see, I've got the skin all around it. It's very important. And what's cool about this is we're going to sous vide it, and when I take it out, we're going to serve it sliced. And when you slice it, you're getting white meat and dark meat all in one slice. It's a really elegant uh, way to do this. So if you have enough plastic wrap to tie it. You can do that. I do. So I'm going to just tie a nice tight knot in it. And make sure it's really tight against the bird. And that's what you've got. You got a ball of chicken. Now, as a safety precaution, I will take a small piece of wrap like this. And I will make a 
thing out of it, and I will go underneath the knot. Yeah, that's tricky. Wrap it around. This will just give you so when you put it in the sous vide, the water doesn't get through. Hi, Lisa. Lisa, who? Prashoda. Hi, Lisa. All right, so this is basically what you're looking to do. Now, when I first did this recipe, it was before sous vide was like even available. Uh, maybe it just came on the scene. Wiley Dufresne started doing it, WD-50. Um, so I cooked this actually in a pot of water. Um, I, I want to go 142. Uh, if you're doing it in my sous vide, if you're doing it in water, go a little bit higher. And basically what you're going to do is you're just going to, you want to walk over here? I do. Yeah, because now I'm not in the picture. You actually are. Oh, fantastic. All right. So before I put these in, I'm going to pull out the ones that I have been cooking. All right. And I'm shocking them in an ice bath because I want to stop the cooking. And it's good for safety reasons because you want it to get as cold as possible as quickly as possible. And again, so all I'm going to do is this is going into my sous vide. Sinks to the bottom. I'm at 142. If you're doing it in a pot, go 146, 148. I also have our peas and carrots in here. They are pretty. They look really good. They are floating a little bit, but that's okay. So we're going to let them go in there. And uh, so that's going to go two hours. Hey, Google, set a timer for two hours. Two hours. All right. And, and that is the chicken part, or the Cornish hen. I really need to stop calling it a chicken portion of the meal. I'm going to wash my hands because I touched poultry. Yeah, him over here. He did. Chicken thing. There you are. Yes. Wash important. away. Important. So we All also right. have um, Kevin with us and. Hello, Kevin. We have Sam Manning's his great balls of chicken. Nice. And earlier Chris said, we. We? Yes. Chris who? Squirtle. Oh. He is my culinary brother from another mother. He's is my brother from another mother. Forget the culinary part. All right. I'm washing my knife. And then a question from Carolyn, oh, Karen Sonberg. She said, have you thought about doing a show using pressure cooker like an Instant Pot? I do not own an Instant Pot. So I will have to consider perhaps getting one and playing with it and seeing. Right. Borrowing one from a friend, you what, mean? What that's all, oh yeah, borrowing. We're, we're on a little money diet over here, but that's okay. I'll borrow one from a friend. All right, next thing, this chicken, uh, Cornish hen, gets served with a black truffle vinaigrette. So I'm going to make black truffle vinaigrette. Um, typically, I would make it in a bowl and be, you know, incorporate the oil to make an emulsi emulsified dressing. However, it's hard to do when you got one hand, and plus it makes uh, a lot of noise. So typically, I would have Lynn hold the bowl so, you know, I can pour the thing and whisk it at the same time. But that's not happening this time. So I bought out the old magic bullet. Bought it in my thrift store for $6. All right. So, calls for, let me get to the recipe so I don't screw it up. It calls for one shallot finely chopped. Now, shallots are quite difficult. You got to have some, you know, decent knife skills to do it. I can do it, but I wanted to show you something. Use a microplane. They have them in all different sizes. So if you want it finely chopped, I'm using one with bigger holes. If you want it minced, you can use one with finer holes. And I'm doing it right into the what a great idea. right into the, the bucket here. Is anything happening? Yeah. Okay. There's nothing falling into the cup. No, yet. it's all gathering on the back of it. Yeah, I'm already halfway through it. Oh, it's, well. it's just a lot easier. To, you know, you might want to consider doing that. These microplanes are awesome. Love them. Great for uh, Reggiano Parmesan. Uh, I even do garlic. If I have a lot of garlic that I need to mince, I'll do it on a microplane. Awesome. They do wear uh, after a while, so you, you will have to replace them if you 
use them as much as I do. Go down until you scrape your knuckle and that's how you know you're done. Nice. All right. There you can see it's on the back. It's going to collect it, put it in. Beautiful thing. All right. Next. Did you describe all the ingredients that you have on your tray? Okay. I had the shallot. Uh -huh. I'm going to add some Dijon mustard. I'm a big fan of this Trader Joe's mustard. I'm get my measuring spoon. I'm going to put in a tablespoon. All right, we're not going to put in a tablespoon, maybe a teaspoon. Goes right in. I am going to add a quarter of a cup of sherry vinegar. It's a good ingredient to have. It's, kind of, it's a pretty, pretty uh, robust vinegar. Uh, I find that stores don't always have it, so when I see it, I'll buy like two bottles just to make sure I have it. Because uh, if the recipe calls for sherry vinegar, you're really going to want it. So um, get yourself a bottle or two of that. So this is a quarter cup. It's going in. Okay. Now, the recipe also calls for truffle oil. Not a big fan. Truffle oil is chemicals. It's not even real truffles. I try and stay away from it as much as possible. Um, I, in fact, I don't even have a bottle. But as I've spoken to you before, and this is on our website, um, I'm a big fan of this uh, Sabatino Tartufo uh, truffle zest. I was able to find a nice big bottle. Uh, it was uh, They gave me some kind of lightning deal on Amazon. It was really great. So I'm looking for truffle oil. I used uh, grapeseed oil, and I mixed in some of the truffle zest, and voila, truffle oil. Why grapeseed oil? Well, grapeseed oil has, has a very mild flavor. I wouldn't use uh, olive oil, although this dressing does call for olive oil. You just, I just added that anytime you want to make an oil, like a, a basil oil or any of that, use an oil that has a very mild flavor. That's why I use grapeseed oil. Would avocado oil? oil? Avocado oil would work too. And so I'm just going to, I need like a half an ounce because it's very potent. Oh, I tasted it earlier. It's All right. very, very potent. I'm going to cut that. So Tammy May commented that she uses microplanes for garlic and frozen ginger. I'm curious, did you ever... Awesome. Do you, do you ever use frozen ginger? No. But I have heard of people uh, doing, you know, freezing it to keep it to last long. So what I'm going to do is I want to mix this stuff up first. So I'm going to put it in. And it quick All right. I do love this magic bullet. And again, typically I would slowly pour it in. What I might want to do is maybe put in a little bit and buzz it up real quick and get it to emulsify. Once the emulsifying happens, you can add it quicker. Hold on, give me one second. So what is this emulsification? So emulsifying is when you're mixing two things that don't normally mix. So I've got the sherry vinegar, is a, you know, is not an oil-based product, but you're mixing it with the, uh, the truffle oil and the olive oil. And on a molecular level, what happens, you have an emulsifying agent, and that's the mustard. And that, they all coat each other, and it allows the oil and the water-based stuff to mix. Um, so you will see, like I made this earlier, and it's not separating like a normal dressing that isn't emulsified. And that's exactly what you want for this. So I can see that it's already started the emulsification. And I'm going to go ahead and add the rest. And we're going to buzz it up. And that will be that. It's a little bit easier than doing it in a bowl. Let that go. Clean my stuff. See, it's nice and rich and emulsified, just like that. See, it's nice and thick. Beautiful thing. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to add a dash of salt.
and a grind of pepper. And I'm going to store it right in this jar. It's fantastic. So it's that easy. Same technique goes for any kind of uh, vinaigrette you want to make. You want to get that emulsifying agent in there. And you, know, you can make any flavored vinaigrette that you want. And Tammy mentioned that uh, blah, blah, blah. you can peel ginger and freeze it. Works great. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. So here we go. I'm putting it in the fridge. I'm going to give it a nice shake to mix up the uh, salt and pepper I just put in. And that's what you got. Beautiful. That is done. All right. Next. What do we have next? We are going to do the mushrooms. Mushrooms, awesome. Would you meet me at the stove? I would love to. Fantastic. All right, move these around, move this pan out of the way, and move. this is all our mushroom stuff over here. Kevin was curious if you had um, got a higher temperature on your vegetables earlier, because the temperature is a little low. No, I did not. I'm letting it go for a little while. All right, so we got a hot pan. Beautiful. I always want to start with a hot pan. Let's go over ingredients. So our ingredients, we're using, you can use white button mushrooms, or you can use these creminis. I'm using the cremini today. That's what they had. That's what looked nice today, so that's what we're using. All right, we got um, olive oil here. That's the pan. Got some unsalted butter. I've got the garlic minced. It's a lot of garlic. You don't have to use it all. I've got chopped fresh thyme. I've got uh, some white wine, three ounces. And I've got some chopped parsley. You can finish it with chopped parsley. And I've got whole butter. And I've got that, my handy dandy lemon juice container. So we are going to get right to it. And we want this high heat. So I'm just going to coat the pan, and of course, I'm using my new Meeson non-stick. Okay, we're going to get that to a nice high temperature, get it nice and hot. And here's the technique. When you put these mushrooms in, you want to put them in face down. All right, and that's what we're going to do. Face down. And the idea here is that we want to form a nice crust on the bottom, or actually on the mushroom top. And you can see it's starting to sizzle. I love these mushrooms. Yeah, these mushrooms are really good. This, this will be one of your go-to side dishes for a lot of different things. You do a steak, awesome. Really good. All right, so. We have Eric uh, Veneer. For this. He said, good evening, everyone. Always, hey, Eric. Always enjoy catching the live feed from y'all. Fantastic. All right, so here's that technique I told you about that'll work for scallops, too. If you watched our very first episode of Cooking in the Grateful Chef Kitchen, the first thing that I did was scallops. And the technique that is the same for this and this scallops is what I'm doing right now, and that is nothing. I am not moving this pan. I may tilt it to get the oil you know, to, to kind of distribute a little bit, but do not move this pan. You don't want to move the mushrooms. You want them to create that crust. And the same thing with scallops. Put them in and sit them. When you think they're burning, leave them alone and let them go more. You just want to... What if they smell like the, they're burning? If they smell like you're burning, then you're kind of screwed. But um, you really want that crust to form. And I'm not going to move this. I'm going to, I'm going to turn on the hood so we don't get smoked out. I can hear it. You're on high heat. It's exactly what you want. And we're just going to let them go. You want the bottoms to get nice and caramelized. If you, if you toss them too soon, what happens is right now, the mushroom bottom is very hot and it is creating moisture in the mushroom. You can see that it's popping. And what's going to happen is the, the moisture is going to collect. And if you start moving them around now, those mushrooms are going to steam 
not saute. So, that, and you're not going to get that caramelization, that beautiful browning on top. So you want to just let it go. And you, if you want, you can I'll give you my permission to grab a pair of tongs and just see where you're at. Uh, you can see it's getting a nice golden brown. Beautiful. Love it. Of course, I'm getting splattered, which is fine. It's all part of the course when you're cooking. That's why chefs don't have any hair on their arms and they got lots of birds. All right, letting it go, letting it go, moving that oil around. You see it smoking, let it go. All right, when the bottoms are caramelized, then we're gonna move them around and saute them for you know, a couple more minutes. Again, we're gonna double check. And I don't know if you can see, I wanna show you what I'm talking about as far as that moisture inside. See if we can catch this on camera. The mushroom is definitely collecting moisture inside. Can you see this thing? Okay. I want you to see what, what's inside there. I'm gonna pour it out. A lot of water in there, a lot of water. So you just want that water to come out, you want it to evaporate, and you see that spitting? That's the water hitting the oil. Did you say never salt mushrooms? I didn't say that. Alright, so Tammy May says never salt mushrooms because the water from the mushrooms will... Yeah! Alright, so now you can see, I'm going to do it over here so the water comes out. It's a beautiful golden brown. That is gorgeous. And Kevin, those are our fresh veggies. All right, at this point, I'm confident that I have that caramelization, and here come the fireworks. Woo! Woo! Oh. Nice. Yeah. That's what you want. Beautiful. That is giving you such a nice charred flavor, you're going to love it. Of course, Fire. make sure you got good ventilation. Now, you would think that there was alcohol in there or something. No, it's just that water, oil, the volatility. That is why if you ever have an oil fire, never put water on it. You, it'll flare up and that's a big problem. So now we're just going to saute them around for another five, maybe three, four minutes. It's really hot pan. So, can you cook them with stuffed mushrooms? Now, if you're going to go do that technique you just did, probably not. Probably not. Clean as we go. Alright. And, and Gloria Marconi to hot. Nice. Well, we got a mushroom and a mushroom now. Let's take that out. I think it's well. Beautiful. There's still some liquid coming out of it. Alright, so at this point, we turn the fire down just a little bit because we're adding butter and we don't want the butter to burn. Alright. Adding butter. Don't fear the butter. Nice swirl it around. Already, you got mushrooms that are caramelized. You got butter. Killer! I think I probably saw on our cooking show that if you put butter and oil in the same pan, you get a better temperature. It doesn't burn as fast. Yeah, so you can you can definitely stop the butter from burning if you have oil in there, and the butter will also flavor the oil. So it's a it's a good thing. All right, so you can see you got nice bubbles. These are nicely sautéing now. Basically basting in butter. Great. All right, so we're gonna let this go for another minute. You want? To, you can see that the mushrooms are getting beautifully brown. I mean, gorgeous. It's the color that you're looking for. Now you can move them around, play with them. It's a great recipe. All right, so once you've got them nice and brown and basted in butter, we're going to add some garlic. Actually, I'm going to add the thyme first. Why? Because I want to. It's my kitchen, my rules. So, is there a difference? No. Okay. Right. If it'll make you happy. No, I don't actually care. We're going to add the garlic. Ass. Again, the thing with garlic is we want to make sure we don't burn it. All right, so we're going to add that's a fair amount of garlic for two people. 
Yeah, you'll notice there we don't have a studio audience today. We decided to go solo or duo. Yeah, it's always that post trip. Yeah. Kind of After quiet. you get back, trying to get life together again. So you can see, I can see this garlic is beginning to brown already because it's nice and finely chopped. At this point, I'm adding the chopped thyme. Thyme and mushrooms go together so well. And so basically what we're doing in this pan right now is we're making a sauce on these delicious mushrooms. Look how gorgeous. Let me show you that up close. Woo! Oh, nice. And that just got and the smell, the right. It smells so good. All right. At this point, we're going to salt the mushrooms because they, the water has already been taken out. We're going to give it a little seasoning. Just like that. I'm going to add a little squeeze of lemon juice. And we're going to add the white wine. Turn up the fire. And here comes our, this is our white wine butter garlic sauce. And now you want the mushrooms to simmer. You want the, uh, the liquid to to go down into a nice thickened sauce and then we're going to finish it at the very end we're going to add our parsley. I'm going to move that to the back burner. We're going to get to our Cornish hens. Nice. Fantastic. Alright, Cornish hens. Today I'm using my carbon steel pan. Why? Because I want to get a nice crispy skin. I want it to see I'm not, I'm not using the non-stick for this. I really want a nice, nice sear on these. Would cast iron work? Cast iron would work. Okay, we're switching. All right. So we're going to use a high heat. So we want to use clarified butter. I've got some ghee. I'm going to use that. It is 100% cow, pure cow, and it is clarified unsalted butter. Exactly what you want. Can you buy ghee anywhere? Yeah, um, nowadays, I think you can buy ghee in a lot more places. So um, I'm going to say yes. All right. So we are going to get a hot pan. Let me get this on. Is ghee shelf stable? Ghee is shelf stable. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to let that pan heat up. I'm going to grab my Cornish game hens that have been shocked in ice water. And why don't we come back to the cutting board and I will work on these. Alright. Okay, we're going to put on some paper towel because these are wet. And here we have our chicken balls that Sam Mantha lovingly referred to them as. We're going to cut off the plastic. I'm going to do it over the bowl. I'm going to cut right underneath the plastic. And we're just going to let the juices kind of come off it. We've got Sabrina Spates with us tonight. Hey, Sabrina. I'm basically going to just dry it off a little bit. All right, so the sous vide technique has given us exactly what we want. It's holding its shape, and we're going to serve this sliced. It's going to be really, really cool. All right, so I'm going to just dry it off a little bit. Cut the plastic. Put it in the bowl. You can see the juices have kind of jellied, and I will probably use those juices. So don't panic. I'm not letting it go to waste. We have Tim Schaefer watching. Hey, Chef. All right. Now, two chicken balls. Skin, beautiful. This one, skin didn't work out as well as this one. So, say, Levy, what are you going to do? We have Jay Judge sending so much love from the Caribbean. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Hope you're enjoying your cruise. It's not a boat. Some people to have some people have the life. 
All right, let's go back to the stove. Check out our mushrooms. Running well. Mm. Awesome. All right, this pan, I can feel it. I'm getting a suntan just from it. All right, ghee. Putting in the ghee. Nice and coated, lovely. Turning so that should, down a little bit. So you just used a spoon in your carbon steel. Does that impact it at all? Not at all. Woo! A lot of moisture. So I want to immediately start moving them around without breaking the ball. I don't want them to stick, so. Now the idea here is we're going to crisp it up. All around. It's going to happen very fast. So the one part of that is open up. Is that, is that no, no, it's okay. It's actually perfectly fine. Nice. Good. My pan has not gotten to the point where it's super non-stick. I'm going to let it go. And it'll release. Clean as I go. While that's happening, we're going to grab our vegetable. Beautiful. Gorgeous color. Yeah, mushrooms are looking great. And, um, get a bowl. We're coming over the cutting board. Sure. Just gonna let these go. We we'll need to bore them with the brown in the skin. All right. I'm going to open the bag over the strainer. It's called the purge. Whenever you sous vide, you got some liquid that comes out, and I just want to get rid of that purge. Now these are absolutely beautiful. How cool is that? I want you to see the, those beautiful carrots that I got from Misfit Markets. All different colors. Those and I got some beautiful carrots. fresh peas also. All right. This little side. Close this. Check our mushrooms. Beautiful. We're going to shut the mushrooms off. Continue to brown the chicken, the Cornish hen. Beautiful. Alright. That's beautiful. That's a little beautiful little plate. Yeah, I'm going to put these aside. Alright. Let's go back to the chicken. Making me work tonight. I am making you work tonight. Hmm. Sorry, we almost knocked the veggies off. My pan is being a little ornery. I'm gonna have to probably re-season it. Should not be sticking. The skin is tearing. And so you know. Not an epic failure, but there's live TV people. Is opening. Got my oven at 350. At this point, I'm not going to mess that skin up too much, but I'm going to throw this into the oven and we're going to do our veggies. What are we doing with the veggies? We're going to saute them. Will that also cook them? It will, uh, yeah, it's going to cook them a little bit, but they're mostly cooked from the sous vide. 
probably take my pears out of here. So, look at that. Some fresh, fresh veggies. Ooh. Look at these pears. Gorgeous. So, fresh veggies should be sous vide at yep. 176. Okay. Last but not least, we're going to do the veggies and we're going to finish off our chicken. A little bit of butter, which I have. Actually, I'll use, yeah, I'll use whole butter. I like butter. More than I need here. Look at these. These mushrooms, you can see all the liquid has gone away. Oh, wow. And you have a nice sauce. They're really ready to go. We're going to put a little heat on them before. It smells so good. A little bit of pepper. And just looks, the pan looks just like it's just totally glazed. Yeah. Exactly what you want. Throw on our parsley. Good eats. Should have made two pounds of those. Next time. Alright, saute. You want high heat? You saute. Jump in the pan. And we're going to baste our Cornish game hens and we are going to plate. Meryl with us tonight, and she says, I love watching you and Lynn. We are learning a lot from these live videos. Thank you. But That's I why it, we do them. But I love it more when your dad takes your takes your recipes and cooks it for them. Nice. Thanks, Which Meryl. Meant benefit. All right. Peas and carrots. Beautiful. I'm going to saute them around in the butter. Season them nice. Break that up a little. Put a salt. A lot of pepper. I love peas and pepper. I think they're slightly under, probably because I didn't talk to Kevin, but that's okay. A little higher temperature, Kevin said. I was like, he said 176.1. Alright, I know this is cooked all the way through, back on the stove. And then here's what we're going to do now. We are going to add the butter. Now remember, this is whole butter now. not clarified. It still has the milk solids. I'm putting it all in there because I need enough to be able to baste. 
So it looks like a lot, but you're not ingesting all that butter. I promise. Okay, putting in the sprigs of thyme. Can you turn the lights off above? Sure. Is that better? Damn, yeah, that's hot. Tim Shaver's going to bust my chops on that one. Yeah, so this one's coming apart. What are you going to do? Not my, not my best work. All right, so we're gonna lift, sit this up here. Why would it break apart like that? So what is the? It might have been uh, how it was, uh, how it was folded, you know, okay. in the plastic. Not really a big deal because the flavor is spot on, guarantee it. Maybe we try with just dimmer lights. All right. Now this technique you can use for a lot of different things. If you're doing a uh, steak, the coat de bouffe. So you're basically flavoring the butter with the garlic. And, this, and you're gonna tilt the pan and you wanna baste. And this is gonna help brown the outside. Again, the skin, a little stuck to the pan. Maybe, perhaps I should have used my cast iron. I'm definitely gonna need to re-season this pan. So we're basically flavoring butter with the garlic, which in turn is flavoring the Cornish ends. Moving it around. Roll it over. You basically want to get a nice browning hot butter. I'm gonna eat this one, honey. You can have the good one. Okay. Sacrifice. Oh, so good to me. Because you want to do this until that garlic gets nice and brown. Because you just ultimately want to eat the garlic too. What happens on live TV? And it's also what happens in your own kitchen. Yep. You were at cheese. Beautiful. So I can see the proteins that are starting to get darker and browner. Remember, this is fully cooked, so. We're not trying to cook it really, because I'm a little not satisfied with the way this one popped open. But maybe I should have made more. Maybe, I'm glad we don't have people in the house. Because you guys won't tell anybody, right? It's all good, man. I, I think the people in the house would have been just fine, even over the place. All right. Let's plate. Are we coming back over there? Yeah. We'll plate it up. Are you keeping the plate there? Yeah. All right. Can you close the fridge? Beauteous. All right. Can you explain, um, question from Tim. Yes. Oh, sorry, Ted. Um, can you explain what re-seasoning a pan is? Yeah, so the carbon steel, you have to season it before you use it. So, um, it's using high heat, a very, very microscopic thin film of flaxseed oil or another high heat oil. And you heat it up real high, you let it cool down, maybe do it again, and you just keep doing that. And then you create this microscopic bond to the carbon steel. As you use it, 
that it just builds on it and builds on it. Like my wok, I always say that my wok is my most non-stick surface. It's true, because, and the more I use it, the more non-stick it becomes. Okay. Because that, that pan used to be just your typical. Yeah, so I may have added uh, red wine or maybe some vinegar or some kind of acid to it that compromised that non-stick surface. But it so. used to also, when you first got it, look like stainless steel. Yeah. So. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna serve this. Cut out my slicer. Oh, it's hot. Beautiful. We've got Todd Redman with us tonight too. Hello, Todd. Hey, Todd. All right, so. Let me show you what we get here. Absolutely gorgeous. Yummy. Is this nice. the one that had fallen apart? This is not the one that has fallen apart. Okay. Uh, typically, you might want to have it cool a little bit before you go at it with your slicing knife. But, uh, yeah, not tonight. We're hungry. A little bit of a mess. Okay. Got that. Put on a little bit of the black truffle vinaigrette. and carrots. Oh, they're mm. so beautiful. Yeah, and those got a nice and little caramelized. I'd want to get food from this, veggies from this company again, just because of those carrots. And our beauty. Button mushrooms. Sauce on there. Wow. Garlic. Fantastic. Also, a nice piece of garlic from the pot. Should we put that on there? I'm going to zoom in for a Nice roasted garlic. Let's see. I zoomed in. Don't move it. You zoomed in. Yes. The red, Fantastic. the red box. I'm going to zoom in manually. And there you have That's a gorgeous. gorgeous plate sous vide, deep bone, sous vide, sauteed Cornish game hen. Beautiful spring peas and carrots, also sous vide, and then finished in a pan. And these awesome mushrooms. So these recipes will be on our website. And. Since this is Lynn's, I'm going to let her taste it. And I'm going to let her tell you what she thinks of it. You got a little bit of the dark meat. You got a little bit of the white meat. Give me some of that truffle stuff. I'm going to give it a little fresh dollop of the truffle stuff. It's truffle stuff. All right, here we go. It's so pretty. And now we're going to and here's, here it comes. Woo! Whoa, I got a whoo, I'm gonna taste it. Hmm. really tender, juicy, it is so tender. amazing. I'm gonna try the peas and carrots. Let's see, hmm, look really good. Oh my God, it's so rich. Hmm. beautiful. Mark Purcell, give you a thumbs up. These carrots have so much carrot flavor because they're organic. And then the mushrooms, take a little one. Always a winner. That's awesome. So, some successes, some failures tonight, but it's all good. That is a delicious plate of food. Um, I'm gonna have to 
try this recipe again. I always like to do the redemption if something doesn't work out or keep at it until I get it. So I've got the one in the sous vide now. I've got the one that I didn't wrap up yet. So I'm gonna uh, work on that one. And uh, I'll get it right. Practice makes perfect. So I wanna remind you the recipes will definitely be on our website, eatingwithcheferic.com. Share that with your friends. Share this group with your friends. Tell them how much you love watching the videos and that you are learning from the videos. And um, we're gonna keep bringing you great recipes, great content. And um, I'm working on something, hopefully, for next week, something really special, a little bit of a field trip uh, to someone else's kitchen, to a professional kitchen. I'm working on it, but if that doesn't come through and it's gonna be a different week, we're gonna do another great recipe right here in the Grateful Chef Kitchen with me, the Grateful Chef, Eric Eisenbud. Be well, eat well, be kind, be nice, and we will see you on the next video, Cooking in the Kitchen, the Grateful Chef Kitchen with Eric Eisenbud. That's me. Peace.